gonna shine. Welcome to the Good Morning Show. Coming up on the Good Morning Show, we are talking to experts about the risks of youth football. You're taking a 40 pound child and putting a four pound helmet on their head and ask them to run into other children. That's one doctor's take on the issue. We'll talk to a local neurologist in the triad about whether banning kids from playing the sport is a good idea. And today is February 1st, the first day of Black History Month and a big day here in the triad. We're live at the February 1 breakfast on the campus of NCANT later on this morning. Welcome back to the Good Morning Show. It's great to be with you. I'm Megan Malaris here with Maddie Gardner. 6.30 on your Thursday morning, February 1st. February 1st. I cannot believe January is over. Well, the biggest sporting event of the year is this weekend. We don't have to tell you what that is. The Super Bowl, of course, between the Eagles and the Patriots. It's projected to be a good game, but the sport continues to face issues off the field. We see hits like this on the field, many times causing concussions and potentially developing CTE in longtime players. Leagues across the country are working to find a way to keep players safe and continue playing the game that they love. One lawmaker in Illinois, Carol Sent, has a different solution, the Dave Durson Act. It would ban tackle football for kids under the age of 12. Many athletes start their athletic careers at a very young age, and the lawmaker says other youth sports are already setting restrictions. Football should do the same. Much like the U.S. Soccer Federation implemented guidelines for no headers for children under the age of 11, and the U.S. Hockey Association implemented guidelines for no body checking under the age of 13. The Dave Dorson Act to prevent CT prevents a child under the age of 12 from playing tackle football in any organized youth sports organization. So a doctor and former NFL player weighed in when she introduced her bill, and they both agreed something needs to be done. Study after study is showing that starting tackle football before 12 leads to greater neurological impairment, impairment later in life. If you give them the right techniques and the right, you know, coaching, it can limit some things, but something should be in place now that we see, we see what's going on. So we wanted to get a local take on this. Talk to a doctor and football coach from here in the triad to discuss. So Dr. Rashad Janjua is a neurosurgeon at Novant Health. Thank you for being here. Robbie Patterson is a youth football coach and vice president of the Piedmont Youth Football and Cheerleading. Thank you both for being here this morning. All right, so Mr. Patterson, let's start with you. From your perspective and hearing this proposed bill, what are your thoughts? Is banning tackle football for those younger than age 12 a good idea? Um, I, I don't think that banning football is is the right um, avenue to take. I, we do everything we can um, and, and we're working really hard to start minimizing the risk. Um, it's come from the top down. Mm -hmm. It's come from the NFL to NCAA to the National Federation high school rules. And in order to create you know a, a positive atmosphere and, mm -hmm. and a, a, a atmosphere that's low in risk, we have to educate. We have to educate parents on finding the correct Mm -hmm. programs to be involved in. We have to educate coaches on the correct techniques mm -hmm. and we're starting to work towards that uh, um, at a pretty quick pace actually um, with studies at Wake Forest that are giving us some um, indication of which drills are the proper ones to use, mm -hmm. what distance is the maximum to eliminate the velocity, the high velocity hits. Um, so banning football at that age and taking that away from the kids I, I, I'm not real um, keen on but um, working more towards minimizing that risk sure. mm -hmm. I think is the right avenue to take. So less of a restriction and more of a technique standpoint that you're taking. Here. Absolutely. So Dr. Janjawa we want to ask you in your line of work what do you see that might indicate this restriction is a good idea? So there's no doubt that repeated head injuries will lead to CTE and you know, long-term effects in children, adults, and there's no doubt about that. I think uh, I completely agree with the coach that there has to be education. I think we have to take it one step farther uh, and have to say, okay, when there is a concussion, because concussions happen in soccer and boxing, let's not forget that, um, that the parents and the coach and everybody are on the same line and aware 
that if signs are detected, not to just blow it off and shake it off, or you just have a stinger, just shake it off and go back. I think you have to take it one step up because those things will happen. It is a contact sport. And so, but to legalize or criminalize something like this, I think this should be up to the coaches and the parents to do. I'm curious about that age 12 that was proposed. Is there a right. significance in that age as far as brain development? Is there a difference between when they would tackle at age 12 or younger than say 13 and up? Yeah, there's no hard line cutoff. This is uh -huh. a, a chosen that they do because the brain develops as we are developing as children into maturity as we get into our teenage years when the maturity has happened. And I think that we should not have the conversation about a 12 because then people start fixating about age 12 right. and now I can and now I cannot play. I think it should be global awareness whether you are 12, 22 or 45. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. You have to take proper precautions and if signs are detected, act on it and take it seriously. Absolutely. Coach Patterson, we want to come back to you. You mentioned some techniques in going over mm -hmm. education with the players and the parents. Can you describe some of those techniques that you guys implement in your league? Absolutely. Um, and from national standpoint, we're um, affiliated with American Youth Football. Mm -hmm. American Youth Football has um, um, developed standards for the coaches where they have to take certain um, courses and they have to go through certain modules, one of them being the Seattle, Seattle Seahawks co tackling technique, mm -hmm. which is more of a role technique where in the past we used to teach get the head across and which put that put your head into harm's way. Now the, the new technique is aiming for the nearest point and work on getting the player down, not necessarily going for the big hit and creating a you know the oohs and the ahs of the crowd. Right. Um, it's it's more let's look at what the philosophy of this game is and that's to take the player down where he's at. How can we do that safely and effectively? We've also added modules um, from um, um, a, a way of standpoint where we've gone through and quizzed the coaches on their football IQ mm -hmm. to see if they really know what they're talking about or if they're just out there because they enjoy the game and they right. want the kids out there that they have their own son out there. So um, we've done AYF and then down to the PYFCL level um, we've taken and brought in um, Wake Forest Baptist neuros neurosurgeons to come mm -hmm. in and talk to our coaches to talk to them about the signs and the symptoms of concussions and our overarching um, um, thing that we use is when in doubt set them out. Hmm. When in doubt set them out. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's also should be made aware that you don't really have to have a head-on-head -head collision in order to get brain injury. Right. A simple fall which seems minor and you would never mm -hmm. think about can also cause impact on through the brain. Yeah. So although you will never completely eliminate it, I mean it's not going to go away, I think all parents should be on board and be educated on what the do's and don'ts are and act upon it. I think that you will make right. far more gains with that than implementing a law that forbids it because that's only going to be on a football field and not in the backyard where people are going to continue to play. It sounds like our leaders from the athletic department and medical fields in the triad are, are on the right track right. to making some some better precautions. Yeah, keeping everybody safe. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, gentlemen, thank, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you both thank for you. being here. We'll post and continue the discussion on our Facebook pages and on WFMINews2.com. We're coming right back with more of the Good Morning Show.